We got another one. We got Big Co here. Yeah, ready man. to roll. Happy to be here. We're doing a little more Thanks for uh, the invite. roster evaluation. Now we did one on the last video that was, you know, a bit more of a rebuild the league that we're in. So make sure you go check that out. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, comment below, all that jazz. And this is another Patreon team. Now this team's in a little bit different. He submitted his team of saying, "Hey, I'm ready to go. What will be my options of getting a, a, to be a, more of a, a of a of a competitor this year? Even though I already have a good roster, what, would you do anything? What would be the the, the avenue that you would pursue um, as the you know off season rolls on and and into the uh, actual season here? So uh, we have so just call out his running backs first. Just go by position. So we don't. I mean, I guess you could go starting lineup, but that starting lineup screenshot could just been a one week thing. You know, he's got good sure. players on the bench too. All so, right. Well, so we don't get confused. It's a one quarterback league. You could give us his quarterbacks and then just give us a couple running backs so it's not like a name jumble and we get lost. Sure. Uh, we got Stafford yep. uh, at, at the quarterback position. And then we got Herbert on, on the IR. So you got your aging veteran who's a stud and you got your young veter- young guy who's a stud. Obviously, it's one quarterback. So, you know, I wouldn't be I'm not I'm not going to lean super heavy. So that's where he's at there. Then uh, he's got Singletary, Brees Hall, Javante Williams, Khalil Herbert. Chase Brown, Abanacanda, Spears, Tajay, Miller, Keaton Mitchell, Keaton Mitchell on the IR. Uh, so, you know, a fun bunch there. Okay. So Devin Singletary, Brees Hall, nice two right J- there to see in the line. Javante lineup. Herbert, Javante, then got some young guns in Chase Brown and Tajay Spears and Kendra Miller and even Abanacanda. You know, we don't, he's young, got hurt. Uh, they Very young. Dalvin. He was the young, youngest, youngest guy in the draft this year. They signed Dalvin, which was you know stupid money spent, and then they cut Carter for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could have just probably kept Carter in a bandana. You know your season was going to go that way. True. So then on the wide receiver side, you got AJ Brown, Chris Godwin, Shahid. You have Trey Tucker, At Perry, Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks, Trey Palmer, Demario Douglas, Jordan Addison. And for the tight end position, you got Trey McBride, which is not tight end premium. And he's got Jake Ferguson, strong. Two uh, studs. Two tight ends there. He's got Chig uh, down here at the bottom. And so, Michael Mayer. And Michael Mayer. So, so just waiting in the wings there. He's got two stud uh, tight ends and then two young bucks. I mean, not that those uh, – I mean, Ferguson's 24. So McBride and Ferguson are just, you know, stud young was got young guys that are getting ridiculous targets already. And then Michael Mayer and Chig – awaiting future stardom right so you know pretty 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 good lineup stop to top to bottom i wouldn't say you know necessarily not like absolutely ridiculous where it's unbeatable no no definitely not but, um, but very solid but solid and, and, and strong and deep and and able to kind of all the uh, stuff you like right and a good man <laughs> able to uh, kind of you know have depth be able to trade uh s- some pieces away he's got a mix of you know mostly he's, old and young but fairly a little bit on the younger side so this is this is what you like to be and this is fluid I, I picked this roster to talk about because real quick he's got yeah. one two two one four one and four eleven one two and two one he is studded out with the picks too so he's got a really good team and he's got one two it's uh not super flex but one two you know guarantees you neighbors are better and then two one is going to be fun no matter what which is why last time I was on here, I said, don't trade away your second round picks. Got to respect that tra- second rounder. Um, I spent a lot of years not respecting the second rounder. I'm learning. I'm learning right along with you guys. Yeah. Every day. Every so day. what? What's is there an area that you're looking to improve or is there a, a theory of kind of what you do when your team's in this position here? Yeah. And that, like, like I was saying, I picked this team to talk about because this looks like one of your teams where you got a deep roster, where you got some good young running backs and you got good young wide receivers all over the place stacked up at tight end so when i look at this team i'm like all right Brees hall we hanging out you ain't going Mm. nowhere Mm. um trey mcbride happy you're on this team Mm -hmm. jake ferguson great to have you appreciate you being here jake ferguson i could see him going in a package to get me somebody more elite and you know i'm I'm trading like first thing is i see when i see this team i'm like all right aj brown plus what gets me justin jefferson um because i just I love A.J. Brown, and he was super high end this year. I just don't trust him long term like I do Justin Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Um, he's obviously not – he's a great wide receiver, but he's not in Justin's class. And you got – you're so deep. I'm A.J. Brown plus what go to get the big dog. And, you know, Justin Jefferson, he may be untradeable to that owner. C.D. the big dog you know, in there I'll too go now? A.J. Brown. Yeah, C.D. CD's 24, 25. 
I'll take him too. AJ Brown plus what gets me CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, one of those cats. Lamar Chase. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously Burrow went out, so we, he doesn't have not as as tasty as those other two guys right this second, so but it's still Jamar Chase. Buy. Might be the one to buy. All right. I'd still much rather, I've said it before, this. I'd still much rather have Justin Jefferson. Sure. That's that's my first order of business. It's like, all right, A.J. Brown plus what gets me that to pair up with Brees Hall and Trey McBride. And then, you know, because you, you got Jordan Addison down here. You're going to be in some purgatory with Burks and Dotson for a second. Hopefully Burks get, you know, hopefully Will Levis can – get a year under his belt here got a new coach coming in figure out what's happening obviously we got um i think that just happened today right didn't they did, did or was that pete carroll got fired today did he, Rabel um, was yesterday Rabel was yesterday so you know it's brand new news basically um see what's happening with tennessee burke's got all the potential in the world but value going down since last year obviously and i mean dotson all he does is catch touchdowns when he gets targets Writing is on the wall for Spears to have a breakout next year. Right. Kendra Miller couldn't get on the field at all this year, but he did last week and he looked good doing it. Uh, Chase Brown. I mean, you, you couldn't have gotten a better couple of little weeks here for some of these guys on the bench to give you throw nice, nice throw ins, not throwaways, but like, mm-hmm. like right now, I mean, you don't, why would you want to trade Chase Brown right now? If Mixon disappeared on that offense, on that team with that offensive minded coach would, that quarterback and those yep. weapons, you know, obviously Higgins is probably gone. Um, you can't pay everybody. And Jamar Chase had that hilarious little interview. When did, did you see him when they, this the real reporter said, how much less money would you take to keep Higgins? And he was like, mm. I mean, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot. Somebody had to come at somebody else need to give up some too yeah. or something like that. It was great. He's Joe, very Joe honest. Chip in a little. Could have loved. I mean, just super honest. Yeah. Good no, for him. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna help your you're gonna help your running back room out by next year. I think you know with Spears, whether it's whether you want to try to capitalize on Spears, you know, Derrick Henry making a big hey, I'm you know loved it here, probably out. Mm-hmm. So whether you want to capitalize on Spears or you're gonna go into next season playing Spears as your RB two, mm-hmm. you at least have some options and Javonta Williams. Sure. So you have some options there at at RB two. So you're not terribly worried about that? Well, the the beauty of it is, for me, is Javante made it through healthy. Mm-hmm. Looked pretty good doing it. Didn't catch a million balls like we want to out of that Sean Payton offense, but Denver really didn't they didn't job, right? Mm-hmm. And it didn't start clicking. And there's, a, there's obviously ch- plenty of change coming. But Javante's still young enough. It hadn't been that long since everybody couldn't talk about his broken tackles per touch mm-hmm. type thing. I mean, he, yeah. you know, so I mean, be, he wasn't Javante, but it's just crazy that he even played and exactly. then got through the season on He came through healthy, and next year he should be, he's probably going to be a beast mm-hmm. because he's Javante Williams. And he, like you said, he should not have been, per what the doctors say, he shouldn't have been ready to play. Mm-hmm. And he was. And we thought, even even I thought I had hope for him because but I just was like us oh, you know he's, he's going to be here a little bit and a little there the boys gave him work mm-hmm. more way more work earlier in the season than I thought I was like man take it easy don't hurt the guy um, but he, <laughs> you know so I I wouldn't be I'm not I wouldn't be trading Javante Williams right this second unless you found that guy and it, you might not have one in your league but if there's a Broncos lover or that the guy that couldn't stop talking about Javante two years ago if he's if they're one of those guys in your league. He could be movable for me, but just being in Sean Payton's offense with the way we know that he wants to be able to utilize the running backs out of the backfield. Javante caught some balls this year, but the whole team, you know, there's just so much more of a ceiling for that offense for Sean Payton's sure. offense. And, and maybe there, maybe it was 95% Drew Brees. You know, we've seen a lot of, we've seen some changes in New England since Brady left. Um, maybe Sean Payton isn't nearly as great as we think he is because Drew Brees was there. It, to be determined, but I would be wanting to hold on Javante on this league, on this team, because it's not like you're tearing anything down. You know, if you're, if Javante is the best player on your team and it's a complete rebuild, you need to be selling him before he hurts his knee. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to take any chances. You you, just, you have to be a lot more conservative with your capital. Yeah. This team right here is like, all right, I'm conservative with that capital in a completely different sense in that I don't want to miss out on the upside of if that, when that thing blows up, because he could be a piece that makes me that puts me completely over the top, you know. And and with like you you mentioned the dude's draft picks, you know, one two two one three something, and then four eleven, uh, you know. So may, maybe that four eleven is his draft pick. Maybe this is a second place team. You got the one two, so you're bringing in you neighbors. Know, you're bringing in neighbor. Let's just say you got neighbors on the team. You got AJ Brown, neighbors, 
Godwin. Godwin. Shahid, who's getting a new team, most likely. That's that's a nice three right there. A.J. Brown, Godwin. You got Addison neighbors, down here. And uh, Addison on the bench, so... Pop Douglas, right? Is is you know you get maybe you get a quarterback there. You you know that that's a that's a nice bottom of the bench guy. Burks, like you said, Dotson and Burks Dotson. just hanging out. At Perry, At Perry, Trey Palmer. I mean, Mike Evans goes away. Trey Palmer had a nice end of the season, seventeen points on this on this particular game that we're looking at. Here. I'm gonna make this stat up off the top of my head, and I didn't look into it at all. But I would imagine touchdowns per target. At Perry probably leading in that stat. <laughs> Oh, you know, I just I just made that up, but I'm telling you every time you threw it to AT period in the red zone, it was a touchdown. So you gotta love that. So that you got some fun guys on the bench, but I would be trying to move around a little bit because you got such depth and like you said, it's a lot of youth too, so you're not really feeling any pressure, but you might even capitalize it's a one quarterback league, you know, you may be giving Justin Herbert in a deal and getting back a Jordan Love in a deal where Let's be quite honest about the situations. Would it shock you at this point for Jordan Love to score just as many fantasy points in the next two or three years as Justin Herbert does? Would that shock you at this point? Now, before the season started, that wasn't even, I wouldn't even bring this up. Maybe Jordan Love is the cutoff and you wouldn't want to go below that. But like a Jordan Love, you give away Herbert, you get back Jordan Love and you get back something valuable or like that's the part that helps to get you justin Something jefferson the top. Yeah. you know aj brown and justin herbert for jordan love and justin jefferson right now obviously some, we have no idea what combination some, yeah, yeah yeah this guy's probably aren't even on the same team but right. the idea is there something like that you know yeah I, you know I, I think i think herbert's value down a hair and and coaching uh I, staley was a jabron seemed sure, like sure, and, sure. you know you get depending on who goes there but you know Ben Johnson goes there and they get another wide receiver. I think he goes right back where they got Brock Bowers. I mean, they're going to, they could, mm-hmm. they could get neighbors. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you, you reinvigorate that, that mm-hmm. offense a little more. I think I'd, you know, stick with her. Talking but, about potentially letting the OC be the quarterback, be the head coach. They're interviewing. Uh, I mean, that's, gonna, that, that's what I thought was going to kind of happen. Yeah. Uh, but well, cause somebody, cause they blocked somebody. They said, I think some, I think I saw that they, uh, they want to give him a chance to interview for the head coach. What's what's his name? Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, no, I, 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 I smell what you're cooking though. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's never exactly you know, when we're talking about players, it's finding those guys in the values that you have and, and matching those up at you know, just, you know, a lot of people comment directly on the, the, the players that we're talking about trading. Well, you know, I might have a different value system than them and uh, than whoever you are. And then, your league mates may have different value systems of, you know, so it's just finding those comparable guys. Like it's giving Jordan love as an example um, of somebody who's gained a lot of value, who is, seems to be more and more coveted and has a good situation. So there's, you know, the, 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 tr- the swap out to get something done um, with Jordan love as the example here makes, makes good sense. Well, it, it, yeah, it's an example. I pulled that out of right. the air. Exactly. You know. I was just I, further I explaining. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, you know, just a, just an idea, just because when you have all the, again, and if you got four eleven and you got second place and you got paid, you know, fantastic. Let's you keep it moving. And maybe next year you just, your idea here is when you're this deep and you have a pretty good, some people are deep and they own deep of mediocrity, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, all right, you got a lot of work to do this team right here. You know, you got studs in some positions, you got Brees Hall, AJ Brown, and Devin Singletary is a great RB two right now, you know. And you got a bunch free of free agent. You know, you got some guys on the on the bench here. We just talked about that could they could definitely have huge pops for running backs. That's why you stack up those guys like that mm-hmm. at running back that didn't. Kendra just had a great week eighteen. That, here's like Tajay Spears, Chase Brown, both mid to late second yeah, round and, picks and, last year. And Chase Brown in the third and, round. And throw Kendra Miller in there, man. He's been hurt all year. Yeah, they just had a great week eighteen. Like you got three great shots right there and khalil herbert somebody loves him oh sure i, th- I think herbert's great that's what i'm saying he's got so, 20 points on this on this window that we're looking at right, right here you know he's capable of putting up points mm-hmm. so you have running backs and mm-hmm. you know I, I don't know that i necessarily want to make a huge move for an rb2 right now no i was in the I'm, off season i would try to find it's just like, do you want to keep spears or make money off spears Again, it's 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 the combination of owner and roster that you're trading with. If you do you want to keep Spears or not? Sure you want to keep Spears, but if you're trying to if the guy that has Justin Jefferson per se or the guy that has um CD Lamb 
if he if his favorite running back on your team is Tajay Spears, it's probably not Kendra Miller at the moment. If you were trading with K- Casey, Casey Myers will give you good trade value for Kendra Miller. Not, but we're so impatient. Somebody, a lot of people out there right now have a big stock down on Kendra Miller. All he did was not see him. He didn't mm-hmm. play bad. He didn't play. He played great this last in week. He 18. didn't play, and then last week he played really, really good. So Chase Brown, we've seen him check, seen him play recently. So what I'm saying, you know, the the guy out there that the throw in the not the throw away kind, you know, the Chase Brown or the Tajay Spears or the Kendra Miller that it would take as a piece of a trade that would actually be valuable. You don't know which one of those guys. Yeah. The guy, you know, if I'm trading with you, if I, this is my team, I'm trading with you. I got to figure out which one of those guys you're going to give me trade tilting value on. Because I'm not just going to throw in Tajay Spears if it's not meaning anything and he stays in the trade. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Because if, if I offer you, let's say I offer you AJ. Tilt it though. Yeah. Exactly. If I offered you AJ Brown and Justin Herbert for the two guys we talked about, Justin Jefferson and Jordan Love, and you say no. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll give you Tajay Spears and you give me a third round pick back and you mm-hmm. say no, then I'm not going to come back over here and give and grab Kendra Miller, throw him in the deal and leave Tajay in. Right. I got to pull Tajay out, throw Kendra in. You say no, pull Kendra out, you know, and and then Jahan Dawson, I'm going to throw him in there, see what happens. I'm not just going to, you know, and I know I, I know you put out the podcast about how to make trades and, you know, I, I was an example about how to layer it up, but I'm not going to just give you all of them at the beginning. I will, I do send out aggressive trade offers, but I'm not going to give you all those guys unless yeah. you make me. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No, I, I like that. I like the idea of upgrading, you know, obviously, like you said, AJ Brown's great. It's tough to upgrade from him, but going, trying to get up into that elite tier. Um, and then, you know, I wouldn't be scared to buy a, a, a veteran good running back in the off season. I'm glad you brought that up. That's the other note that I needed to make sure we got out of Cause that podcast I listened to recently, uh, I try to listen to all the podcasts you, that you guys put out. We put out, we, me and me being me not here a lot, but for the last two months it was all gambling podcasts. Cause I was, you know, in the net, in the heat of the moment with the pick contest that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that y'all were saying in a recent podcast was when do you know when you're, when you're how, when do you know you're close enough to go take your first round pick and buy a running back? Mm-hmm. That's what I listened to recently. And I'm glad you just said that because to me, and then somebody said, well, you need to be in season. You need to make sure that you're, you know, that kind of thing. But if you think you're over the hump uh, to me, you to, to be buying a, a really good running back, you need to know you're over the hump. Mm-hmm. You need to be past the hump. Like you need, you need to be you the rest of your team needs to be dragging your way there. Like, you know, a Devin Singletary, um, had a nice little pop in value here recently, mm-hmm. but like a Javante Williams, like if you find the right owner, you could stack up a couple twos and a three and get Javante Williams. You don't have to just fire off a first round pick for right. Javante Williams, you know, but like you, so there's a lot of, the Derrick Henry's of the world that, that the, the video we just did with the Cooper cup and Devonte Adam trade. Like there's a lot of veteran running backs that, well, I say a lot. That's, that's, in, that's incorrect. There's a couple of veteran running backs here and there, like a Joe Mixon this year did very, very well, but he was very uh, relatively ex, uh, inexpensive and moderately priced compared to recent years. Mm-hmm. And everything was stayed the same for the team. You know, and so I would much rather I'm, I'm again, I learn, I try to figure out how to make myself a better fantasy football player on the daily. And this is a completely different conversation than I would have had with you four or five years ago. But like, I'm completely not itching to trade my first round pick for a running back. Right. I'm very happy to find myself with a early first round pick and take a Jameer Gibbs or a Brees Hall sure. or a, um, one of those cats that just came out this really sick, you know, I'm mm-hmm. very happy to have those guys. I'll definitely give you a first round pick for Jonathan Taylor right now. But like outside of those very top end guys, I'm not itching to give away my first round pick for a running back. I'm, I'm happy to, but to draft those guys early in the first round, those stud running backs, but mm-hmm. I'm not trying to buy the, I mean, I would give you probably one twelve, and you know, for James Cook, but like, I'm not just going to randomly give you sure. A, a, a and first we know round. he's got one too, and I, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want him to take neighbors. Uh, exactly, you know, 
Yeah, no, you're not forcing it. I mean, like, well, we already went through it earlier. I mean, he's got a ton of RB2 potential, and any of those guys could be RB1 next year. Would it – Chase Brown looked like RB1 at, in spots. Tajay Spears could easily be an RB1 next sure. year. Kendra Miller could be yeah. – he's a, you know, Javante Boyd. He's got, like, like three or four solid dart throws. Mm-hmm. I don't think this team needs to trade for a running back at all. In fact, I would probably trade one of those dart throws – to the right person that's giving you the most value on one of those guys, in addition to some of these other guys, to make that stud push. You know, I'd trade A.J. Brown up. We just talked about, you know, I'm not trading four running backs on this team. I'm actually probably going to use some of what you got to take away a little bit of that gamble because just as quickly as three or four of these dart throws could be good because I've been doing this for 20 years, all of these guys could miss and sure. never really pan out like you want them to. So like I don't I'd love I'd love to see Chase Brown on my bench. Khalil Herbert on my bench, fantastic. Javante, yeah, he no, could start you- for you any week and he could be a stud. I love all these guys on my bench. There's no chance they all work out. Just that's just life. And if it did, if it if you just had the best run out ever and all those running backs hit for you, fantastic sure no no you, just the odds are it's not going to happen you can get down with with a a good rotation of rb2s on the bottom of your bench i like having one workhorse and then like a breeze who's elite and then i like having a bunch of these guys like I, a lot of my teams have chase brown tajay spears and kendra miller on them these same three guys those are the guys that i've you know invested in. right exactly um, that's why i picked this team i was like this looks like a casey roster and it had trey mcbride mcbride the boot but that that's being said on this team i have no problem trading for you know trying to get jonathan taylor i have no problem trying to put josh jacobs on this team i have no problem trying to put even a saquon barkley if i can get him for the right to, right price and put him on this team yeah um, the problem you know. with that right now though is it's a three it's a start three wide receiver sure. league, and you're about to bring in neighbors but well that's what we're, we're gonna we're gonna get neighbors we got addison we're gonna try to upgrade our top end wide receiver but and, you're so you but it's it's a three it's a start three wide receiver right. and, and it's two a flex. two flexes sure. and it's not tight end premium even though you have stud tight ends and i would probably use one of those cool fun guy names on the bench to throw in that i uh, use michael sure. mayer or a chig because you have the other two guys in the starting lineup already, but like you, you don't have enough because it's three starting wide receivers and not tight end premium. If it was tight end premium, obviously if it was two point, but even at one point five, you feel better about starting tight ends in your flex. Oh, so it's not even there's not, not even a tight end spot. It's just no, no, flex. There's no yeah. There's, there's no, no tight, tight end, end spot. spot. So you know I, because I don't. I mean I don't necessarily want to be starting Jake Ferguson every week per se in a non-premium format but i guess it could be a lot worse but you know i just the consistency of the wide receivers and especially you get a couple of studs like if you had you know obviously chris godwin we know he's a stud and we it took him and baker a minute to get going this year and he had a lot better ending of the year than he did beginning of the year but like shaheed very up and down boomer bust with his quarterback and shaheed super young and he kind of came out of nowhere and he really did really good this year to get a new team you know um but like you know, Dotson and Burks are nowhere near your first run to near your starting lineup right now, and Jordan Addison necessarily, when the tight end comes he's back, in, he's in your starting lineup if they have a quarterback. You hope so. He, I mean, he is. And There's, if you're and if you're good enough, you hope he's on the bench. You hope you're good oh, enough I, to have him on the bench. I don't. You I, know, I'm on a on a, this deep of a like if we're starting all like yeah jordan addison is in this lineup with a quarterback i agree i agree and, but and and jordan addison was awesome for most of the season sure he was real dude he was a rookie he yeah was awesome, that's what i'm saying like i'm not, I, I he's 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 in my if i'm he'd be in my three wide receivers that i'm starting you're you're i'm throwing him in pretty much every week godwin's in there i'm going to get neighbors so those are going to be you know those are going to be my starters uh you know I, i'm i'm just you know a lot of that those, I think the I, I forget what the stat is, but the the those middle round middle tier wide receivers, the running backs outscored all of them. Um, like the 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 running the, backs in those areas outscored like that. Do you know you know what I'm saying? I'm doing a bad job of our. I don't. I'm it. not trying to put you on the spot, but I would imagine like there's. I've been saying the sameness of the wide you know wide receiver 25 and wide receiver 45 are probably the same, but. There's a uh, scoring was down in the NFL this year. You had to show me the running backs that scored points. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I mean, a, bunch of, of a bunch of them did. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll, like all the winning rosters this year had CMC and Kyron Williams on them. Oh, well, you CMC know. wasn't a first. I mean, CMC's a. No, no, I'm just saying, like. I thought you said middle running backs. I'm saying um, the. I think the. the 
I, for, I forget what the stat is. I, I just read it the other day and I'm drawing a blank on it. But the running backs in, in some form of the tier of where the two sets of wide receivers are running, the running backs farly outscored the receivers. Um, well, in the top, they, they that, always do if they're good in that range. Um, and basically like the, like the middle, the middle tier of wide receivers are almost irrelevant. Um, yeah, agreed. That's why I'm saying let's know. trade up and get some good ones. Right. Sure. And if we, and if that's a possibility and you can trade up and get some good ones, you can, but I, I just feel like running backs are, are cheaper. There's a, a, a decent amount of good ones, um, that, that you can get and make a difference on this team. And I can either start one in my RB two spot, uh, and then flex out, one of those, hopefully, one of those other three guys hits that's down there. Uh, Chase, Kendra, um, sure, or that, Tajay, and and you know that that's I, I don't know I I'm I'm still okay with buying running backs in the off season when my team's good. I'm not buying any running back in any off season until we get really really close to the beginning of the season. They're the most likely person to get. That's hurt. fair enough. So, but like I'll I'll if but he has, he has one too. So if for two one. And if I could add something else to that and get Kyron Williams from somebody, yeah, I'll that do that. Happening. Well, I'll I'll give you two one, and I'll add you know add one of those other running backs to it, and I'll give it's you something late. else. It's it's too late. I'm just like, dude, uh, Kyron, at you, the end of the season, while we were going into the playoffs, I could I had to trade a 25 first to somebody on a terrible team to get rid of Kyron Williams. Nobody would give me anything. Still, people are out on Kyron Williams. The general public is mostly out on Kyron Williams still. They think he's just going to get replaced because they can't wrap their head around that there's that this guy could possibly be good and their guy for the next year. Like I'll take that chance. Where, how, and why would they replace him? I, exactly. I'm I'm in that camp firmly. Well, I know you were in that camp because you were in Kyron's camp before anybody else was in Kyron's camp. I was like, Kyron's not big enough to be any good. I, I, that was just easy for me. I was like, he's not big enough to be any good, and he's a stud. So, and he's not just been fluky flash splash plays like i'm talking like 20 touches a game held up i mean yeah he did miss time but when he came back he's you know right he's just, points per game he's number two i would say generally i'm with you on buying wide receivers building around wide receivers getting the best value when i get to this point where my team's pretty good and and i'm, I'm in the top like i'm gonna be looking for a running back like i just I just feel like there's good value on some of the on some of the RB ones in the league here. Like uh, Josh Jacobs is one guy that it's like I'll continue to buy Josh Jacobs and put him on this roster. Like all he's done has been an RB one pretty much since he came into the league. He got hurt at the end of this year. He needs a contract. I really don't care where he goes. Like I I, I will buy that guy. He is awesome. Like Saquon Barkley can't stay healthy. If you don't want to buy Saquon Barkley, understandable. He's probably pretty cheap right now. Like you you no, nobody's gonna like. I just think that there's I don't think Kyron's like crazy like we've we did a bunch of startups here mm -hmm. recently. I'm still getting Kyron in like the fifth, sixth, seventh round. Yeah. Uh obviously, like you said, they're they're in the playoffs and he gets another chance to be sure in games where I love the playoffs because you don't have a minute games at the same time anymore. And they're all individual now, so we get to watch right. teams instead and, of and watching to clear 12 up, games at once. I know that I shouldn't have sold Kyron for the first, but it's a rebuilding team. I didn't want to go. I didn't I didn't want him on my roster scoring points. I sold him like two weeks before the playoffs started for a 25 first. It's way too cheap in my opinion. I just didn't want to keep him for, you know, just in case anything happens. And those things that I'm trying to, where I'm rebuilding, I'm liquidating all running backs for a lot of the reasons that you're talking about right now. In this particular juncture i'm okay with just finding whichever wide receiver or running back is the best value that i can kind of get and and going in on those guys i know this is cherry picking for instance raheem mostert on the one of the best offenses in the league a second round pick got him a you know a, a late second round pick got him from for a team for the team that we just you know did sure. last last segment um you know so um that's just my part like I know you talked about Rashad White on a pass one. Like I would buy Rashad White from the right non-believing owner. Mm -hmm. If the if the, you know if somebody's selling out on Rashad, well, you White, just got to find a team that's going in the opposite direction that wants to sell their running back. There you go. I mean, I would I would I would much rather buy. So I, I think there's two ways to approach it. I think you can buy a, a, a younger, middle-aged veteran. When I'm saying veteran, I'm not talking about Derrick Henry. Those are the guys I'm going to buy in season. Like I I just I feel like Josh Jacobs, and if I could somehow figure out how to get Jonathan Taylor or Kenneth Walker like you know yeah Kenneth Walker sure I, he, he's probably a little harder to get right now uh, or maybe not I don't know uh, obviously JT's probably still pretty hard to get but there, it just seems like 
So, like, all right. So this is really, uh, this has become a really good organic conversation about this because you and I haven't gotten into this in a while. Like I would much rather add mu- what more it would take and not necessarily in draft picks. In, right. In, in names off my bench, especially mm-hmm. in this team that we're talking about right here, I'd rather take. You've got you know, some depth available to trade got upgrade depth, positions. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, I feel like an idiot. I'm sitting here. We talked all that time about this team and I, for some reason, all I could see was the color of the jersey, and Devin Singletary was James Cook to me <laughs> for 30 minutes. <laughs> and I'm still shook about that because that completely changes what I thought this man had going on in his lineup. Um, so anyway, I would much rather add to what, you know, I i don't have a problem buying Josh Jacobs in the right position from the right owner. I'm not overpaying for Josh Jacobs, but I get it. He's only 25. I, just, I would, But I would much bottom rather. Bottom first, let's go. I would much rather give you what it took to get the who did I just say the Seahawks running back Kenneth Walker Mm -hmm. um I'd rather I'd rather buy Rashad White um I'd rather uh I'd rather buy Jacobs than than Barkley but I'd rather get Rashad White for as cheap or maybe cheaper than what Barkley's going to demand based on name cache um yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, that, that, it, I don't know where Rashad White's value kind of falls. It seems yeah, it's like going to be, it's gonna be owner to owner Saquon's for sure. Saquon's been like fifth-ish round picks since we've been doing startups these last couple. Yeah, it's just, you know, and of course, and here's the, uh, Saquon. Is I, th- I think Saquon, is, if, he's been, if it's a longer running team, he's been on somebody's roster for a while, he's probably going to get out from underneath the Giants or they're going to go in a different direction of some sort, most likely. Somebody is tired of having... Saquon Barkley on their team and not quite getting what they think he should yeah, be producing. That's a good point. And I feel like he's probably cheap enough. And we've seen it. If you go look at the game log, like it's really not that bad this year. He's was kind of banged up and their team was fucking terrible. Terrible. Like just if he can just get to a good situation mm-hmm. and there's no reason that he can't go through a, a long like CMC was banged up for a couple seasons in there. Love you it. You know, not nearly as banged up as as Saquon was, maybe um, less serious of injuries. Sure. Good point. But you know, Saquon's got the same juice as CMC does. No, I mean, maybe not quite, but he's an awesome pass catcher. He can do all those things. If he just gets into the right situation and can stay healthy, uh, you know, I, it, you're taking a bit of a gamble. That being said, you know, if I can buy Nico Collins, I'll buy Nico Collins. Like, I have no problem with that. It's it's going to be, who, who can I get? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'll buy Nico Collins. Can I buy Tank Dell because he was just injured? Uh, can I buy, buy Ayuk or Michael, Michael Pittman Jr.? Can I buy Drake London? from somebody who, you know, it, it, it's, there's all sorts of different things I could buy for that particular team. It just seemed like we could potentially a, a weak link could be that, that our, our second running back isn't as dominant as it could be. Well, um, the cool thing about the dynasty part is it's not redraft and you, the first two weeks of the season aren't going to kill you. Right. You're most like, if you have a good team, Oh, not having a good RB2 is probably not going to keep you out of the playoffs. No, not at all. You and, you, and you have very functional ones. So you, you can wait to go buy the older, the Mostert, the Henry, the whatever. Like like we were talking about the receivers in the last one. Right, right. You can buy those same type of running backs going into the playoffs, which is, is in most people's opinion, what you should do. And in, in my opinion, mostly what you should do. You should figure out where you're at before you go buy in the running back on it. But this team is is plenty young and has, has plenty of stuff going on for it. So I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so let's just... Let's zoom out from we zoomed in pretty good. Let's just zoom out about the moving parts that it takes to find the right time to buy the right running back from the right team. Like, I mean, I, I I would rather get the the guys that I just mentioned. I'd rather buy those. The guys that you mentioned, you'd rather buy those. But the poor, I'll buy Rashad White. It just depends on the part is like, seems like he's going the other way. Then those other guys were kind of going down a little bit. Let's say this podcast comes out tonight. Uh You got between now and September before any of it really matters. But if June the 1st, I'm talking to Casey and he's like, yeah, I'll give you Kenneth Walker for this guy and that guy and that, you know, and or, you know, hey, I'll trade you. You can get Barkley from me for this. And I feel like if it's cheap enough, I got a strike, you know. But like you said, the, the, your RB2s are passable enough. Your starting lineup is strong enough. You got a good enough team. I think that 411 is your draft pick. Um, I'm just assuming. But I think that you can go and get into the season – and not only know where your team stands, yeah. but be able to say, hey, Casey's supposed to be good, but he's not. I'm going to go get Barkley from him today, and it'll sure. be way cheaper than it would have been three weeks ago. 
Or Casey's team is really good and he doesn't want to sell Barkley, but Corey's team's faltering and now I can go over there and get Josh Jacobs from him for cheaper. You know, it's just yeah, it, there's I, I think, a lot of moving parts that goes with buying the running backs. I think I, there's two ways of looking at that. I think that's I think that's way I just I also just think veterans that didn't necessarily uh perform to, to where they have been for either whatever everybody's expectations were or anything are gonna be the cheapest in the offseason they get in and start scoring oh, points like and, then, and then it gets up a little bit so that, that that's kind of where that that mindset comes from i don't need to do anything with this team right now like you could also you know, take that to the next level you could also like josh jacobs two years ago was top three mm -hmm. right he led the league in rushing oh, he's and been he, rb1 for he tore every up. season he's been in the league basically team fell apart lots of injuries here and there but like, and then Barkley team fell apart, made it out. Both of those guys made it out. Real, and Barkley came out really healthy. Did um, Josh Jacobs came? He's not. He, he was on IR. He's hurt, but out. not like completely hurt. I bet if they were chasing a championship right now, that he'd play. I bet if they, they didn't you know? think he would probably play. Exactly. So you know. But that being said, like whichever one of those, you might have to. It's a good point. Maybe in week three, you might have to pay a little bit more. But maybe you did. Maybe you dodged the bullet of the you, one who. Right, you're dodging bullets. Maybe, maybe you dodged the bullet of the one who actually fell off the cliff, and we didn't know it early. Right. You know, maybe Saquon comes out there and he's gotten to put on a little bit more weight this year because he's always been big. Through, you know, he's always been super strong. Maybe Saquon's a step slow next year, and you just don't know it until game three, and you didn't buy him yet. Yeah. But if he's not a step slow and he's the right position, he's blowing it up, and he's the RB one every week, right. or you know, a top not a not a RB one as in one through twelve, but like if he's RB two, week yeah. first three weeks of the season, he's still he's going to cost more, but he's still twenty eight years old. He's not going to cost the, the world unless he's on that one team that's three and zero, and the guy's like, well, I'm not right. trading him, right. I'm going to ride him in the championship. You know, then you just look at different options. Jacobs had that. Hold out and then a slow start to start the season. Remember those first couple games, a lot of attempts, yep. low th low threshold. Mm -hmm. Through week twelve this year, RB four total, RB four. Nice through week twelve. Then you know hey, things start to taper off a little bit once he, you, once tapers you get off real quick when you get hurt. And you're well, not I mean he had a buy and that you know the, the Raiders are just I, you know I think they transition coaches at some point in there and you know you just. But my point is, is I feel like once again, David or uh, yeah, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs was out there performing for the most part. He slow, slow three games under under double digits for I think all three of those, or maybe at eleven and one. Mm -hmm. But like slow start, and then even with a slow start, like still RB four could have been RB two or one with three good games to start the season off, or three regular Jacobs games to start the season off. Yeah, where you're probably averaging not 14, ahead of CMC, 15. but yeah, I get yeah. it. I get it up there too, um, and a free agent. Mm -hmm. You know, so he can go kind of wherever he wants, and and we shall see. You know, if he could end up in you know a really 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 good spot. Um, but you know, just I, I know it's not sexy to buy the running backs anymore, and I pretty much adhere to that that uh, rule at this point. Is like I'm not I'm not going to be buying a whole bunch of running backs. I have no, in, I don't, in a lot I, of I don't spots, mind but, buying them. It's just I'm gonna I'm gonna be a lot more picky about who mm -hmm. and when I buy moving forward. Yeah, because again, again, and, you know, Mixon was a good point. I think that that would have been a great buy midseason. But I, dude, I tried to sell Mixon to playoff teams, you know, for for two twos. That and nobody exactly would even, nobody point. would even buy him. Then not you as know? smart as you are. Right. Well, you, you know, know, I'm I got a team that I need the picks for that mm -hmm. you know is a pretty solid team, but I could use those two twos. And Joe Mixon's not doing anything but getting a little bit older. And I got a a decent squad, but you know, well, he's still on my team now, so it's not the end of the world, but. Yeah, my thing, you know, I think you can, you can always draft picks are going to be your best equity to purchase a running back with, mm -hmm. and you can always dig into the bag if you find yourself because if you find yourself good enough, that's what I was talking about. Like I, before, I buy a really good running back or invest heavily, mm -hmm. you know, outside of giving, you know, getting somebody really cheap or this or that. Like, I I want my team to drag me forward because. That way, the bad draft pick I'm giving you is likely later. You know, right. I the last thing I want to do is go pay, you know, pay extra for, you know, give you even if it's a quote unquote late first for Saquon Barkley right now. I give you the, I give you my hope. For my I got a good team, right? I'm gonna give you my first next year for Saquon. I'm bringing in neighbors. I'm good. Saquon's a step slow. Just, just guessing here. Saquon, Saquon's a step slow. AJ Brown ended again. You know, just 
fell on the ground last week holding his knee. He's okay. He's probably not going to play this week. He might play this week. Who knows? Blah, blah, blah. But maybe that's week two of the season, and now he don't get up. Mm-hmm. A.J. Brown's out. I've given you my first. Saquon's hurt. And he's slow. And, you know, anything can happen. And, like, I would just rather, you know, play my cards a little. The asset game, the A.J. Brown, in that exact in that exact example, A.J. Brown gets hurt in my example. So he's a wide receiver. You know, Chris Goblin tore his ACL year before last. You know, it, it can happen to anybody at any time. It's just if I build this team out and I got Brees Hall as my staple, and, dude, you could have Chase Brown. <laughs> Brees Hall's coming off an injury. Right, and he's a stud. You could have Chase Brown and Javante Williams and Tajay Spears for this team, and all of a sudden you don't need it. You're Now you got running oh, backs coming out of your ears. Right, and like I said, this is what he's got going on is exactly how I want to build my team. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I I wait for the point where I can strike, whether it's in season or not, for the running back position. So I, I again, if is I, TBD, if I have a team where I'm I can probably guess that I'm gonna get if I give you my first, it's gonna be pick one ten or later, just the mm-hmm. variance in the playoffs. Like there's no, I have a team where there's no chance if I give you my first next year, it's not a playoff team. I'm double deep at starters in every position. So like even if I got killed at injuries, I'm still going to the playoffs. So. I could give you the 110, 111, 112. That would be my first round pick next year. I could give it to you. Unless, I mean, I could give that away knowing how late it is. Unless I'm in a position like that where like, man, if I'm a, if I'm an injury tour away, or have we not all been the team that scored the most points? If you're playing win and loss record and not total points or not this, if you're playing win and loss, have, you, have we not all had our turn having the most points sure. in like your – six and 10, you know, and your points against are like 300 more than anybody else. And you just had that year of bad luck and you missed the playoffs or what, you know, like it, anything can happen. So I just, I'm much more protective of my draft picks than I used to be. And unless I'm giving you a first round pick and unless I'm getting something back that would be, I would be fine if that was an early pick, I don't want it in the deal. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, you know, because that way I can yeah. give you if I get if I'm trading players for players, it's completely different players for players. The players are set. They are what they are. The career paths do what they do. Draft picks are just a that's all we have a variable equity. Like, you know, like yeah. that's that's the holy grail of, yeah. of this whole dynasty game is what could this be? The puka, you know. Good Lord. Third, fourth round pick in every mm-hmm. draft. All of a sudden, he's one of the best yeah. wide receivers in the league. Like, that's what a draft pick can do for you, you know? Um, it just... Yeah, I mean, one pick could go from a retool to a, to a contender that year. Sure. Last year was a year to do it. Yeah, I mean, Jay Wayne, who's not here, he he, he took... He traded a pick in, in the middle of a draft and, and got Puka and a team that was like, you know, a decent team, but you know, a little bit older, at Keenan Allen and all those kind of guys. Um, you know, put him right back in position and he won the league this year. Boom. Throw Puka in um, there for a team you know, that was decent. A year or two ago, you know, just to cap this off and then we got to get out of here. It's sure. way too long. Sure. Um, but, you know, just talking Kyron, you know, every draft that I was in two years ago or whatever it was, whenever Kyron came out, I I, tr- I moved when Kyron would be hanging out in the fourth, I would move a year ago's fourth and a, and a, a you know, a fourth I had or whatever I had to do. But like every single league that I'm in, just about, I own Kyron Williams in because mm-hmm. it was just like I made a decision to buy that guy everywhere. And guess what? I just he just sat on my bench, mm-hmm. it looked like it stunk for a year, and then here we are. Um, I know, remember, and, and he it. put me put me right in the playoffs in in almost every single league. And the leagues that I was rebuilding in, I got you know, yeah, did I only get a first in a team that I just bought into? For Kyron, yeah, I mean, I mostly traded it to that guy because I thought he had a good chance of going to the playoffs this year. But the next year, like I moved it back a year so that because the team didn't look like it, you know, might might be worse in twenty twenty five. Absolutely, so, um, professional move. But your Kyron helped us win the quarantine league that the three of us have together, and you know, like I remember you getting Kyron everywhere, and I'm th- and I when we drafted him on that team. It's a funky taxi squad situation. You put somebody on your taxi and you can't move them. If you move them out, you can't put them back in. And it was the third round. And I was like, that's cool. That's perfect guy to sit back there and let him wait. But you were drafting him in other teams that were better. And I was like, that's a wasted pick. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, did, I didn't. I I was like, he's too small. And Casey's wasting that pick right there. 
Yeah. And like you said, for the first 12 months, you were right. I was so right. <laughs> and then this year he helped us win that championship for sure. He drug our team to the championship. Sure. And, uh, and then some, and, and all the other rosters that you have them on, I mean, you got, I mean, Kyron is a fantastic asset right now right. and I'm not selling him for cheap. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I think they're the, re, the replace him thing. Now I am a running back replacer, mm-hmm. but in that system and Sean McVay and the way they've had their draft picks and not had draft picks lately and this and that, and they got Puka and they got Kyron late and this the way and that, they've that, the, got uh, played now, out on Todd Gurley too. I mean, you know, they are not, they are absolutely not paying for a running back after what, the Todd Gurley. Well, really turned the tide for me with, with, and I know we're way off of talking about this team. Oh, this Jason's going to be so mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what turned the tide was in those in that chunk that he missed. They they were a different fucking team, and when he came back and went right back to business as usual. Sure. And they you know did did Re- Royce Freeman look terrible as their running back and and Ronnie Rivers and and who uh, didn't look Daryl like Henderson. They they all of them looked fine, but the offense just runs so much. Everything just got so much better when Kyron came back from that injury. Agreed. And, and it just that's well said. Yeah, that is completely I, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, Maybe, you know, hey, look, I, I I nailed it. Should I be selling? What should I be selling for? Can I get, you know, and if and if you were a playoff team Mm-mm. or, you yes. know, playoff Mm-mm. caliber team, you can't because the state of the running backs and injuries through the thing, you were like, I, I, what am I going to do? I can't can't take this guy out of my lineup. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, then it really, really sunk in for me when it was like, all right, he left. They weren't nearly as good. He came back and he was right back. Like everybody else was like, get the fuck out of the way. Yep. And now you're back in here and you're about to, you're, we're going to, we're going to ride you. We're going to ride you. And now, you know, do I want Kyron three years from now? Maybe not, but I want him going into next year. Absolutely. <laughs> you're not, yeah, <laughs> I'm, you're not buying him from me if I have him. I don't have him many places because I didn't believe, but that one league we got him in, we attempted to trade anybody we could for as many draft picks as we could get. And then our team got hot and looked like we had a chance and most of that was because Kyron came back, yep. and it's like, well, thank God we didn't trade him. Could, Kyron all and the Najee, other guys, baby, Najee, all the other Najee at the end of the year. It was Kyron or some wide receivers that we were attempting to trade around with, and we could have traded any of those wide receivers; wouldn't have mattered. But thank God we didn't trade Kyron. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's get right. out of here. You get home to your sick wife, and Later. Uh, and we will. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Sorry, we got a little off the rails. Big goes back. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, good conversation here, a L- little bit of different approaches and uh, long conversations of yes and no's. And, uh, so I think, think good stuff here. Uh, be sure to holler at the discord, $5 holler, and you could get first priority on, on this, this roster evaluation stuff. And we're going to be doing this all off season. Cause I, you know, I think it's an important part of this and I think we can, again, get in here and hammer out some things and then also stumble on organic conversations. Um, you know, which is kind of what the show has been built about sure. around. If, if, uh, so. if that if that whole running back trade conversation, when, why, and where, and how, and all that stuff that we just really argued about for twelve minutes, if that didn't pique your interest, you're not playing dynasty fantasy yeah. football. Well, you know, everyone's probably screaming that I'm wrong, and I, and I will admit that you know it's you're probably right in most of the theory there. I just I, I feel like at a certain point I I'll buy in, and it's going to be about price um, always, always. So anyway. We appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Peace.